Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Fry, and welcome to The Space Between, podcast episode number eight. Today, I have the tremendous privilege of speaking with Amanda. My name is Amanda Jones. Mrs. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> On this awe-inspiring podcast, I'm going to ask you not to concern yourself with what we are saying in words, but rather listen as though you hear an incredible piece of music. Please let whatever strikes a chord with you fall into place naturally. Let the energy of the words become a symphony. It's not about making an effort to understand. This may be one of those podcasts that you listen to, go away, let whatever resonated with you settle, and then come back and listen to some more. I promise you, you will hear it differently each additional time. This understanding has always been within all of us and continues to expand into that space between our thoughts. Words, phrases, and ideas may be spoken in a way that you may not have heard previously. We are no different than you. We are all spiritual beings having human experiences. Amanda and I both came across an amazing way of understanding who we are and how our thinking works. We are here to invite you to work with us through our coaching practice. If you find yourself caught up in struggling, anxiety, depression, or curiosity, discover yourself beyond what's ordinary, habitual, or typical. So buckle up and let's go. It's worth, it's worth it to have a front row seat. If this episode raises any questions or you'd like us to expand on anything shared, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of new podcasts because we truly never know how we're going to show up. And life is a dance. At the end of this podcast are some funny deleted scenes. Please enjoy. Amanda Jones uncovered freedom after 23 years of eating disorders and depression through a revolutionary understanding of the human experience. After decades of traditional psychotherapy and endless healing modalities, Amanda finally found the truth in the simplicity of the three principles. This new paradigm has unleashed healing and transformation across the globe. A former dancer with a BFA in dance from New York University, she now coaches and shares with others who are struggling or simply curious about how an understanding of the principles can transform lives. Amanda is currently partnering with Dr. Amy Johnson in the Little School of Big Change, helping countless people wake up to their true nature and uncover lasting freedom without willpower or strategies. You can contact Amanda at uncoveryspace at gmail.com. La, 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 la. Amanda Jones, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe that all the things that I've been through in life have brought me to this place, and yet I can believe it because I do believe it. How amazing is it that through all the things we've been through, we are together here on the podcast from within the space between. Thank you so much for being here. This is a true honor. I appreciate you. This is going to be an amazing, amazing conversation. Wow. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Please, please. Honor is a strong word. It's way up there. <laughs> on a higher level of consciousness. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and just get right into it. Get crazy and go, just go insane. All right. Let's do it. Let's do All right. it. Amanda Jones, you wrote this book. Tell us about this book and how it came about and why you decided to write it. 
Well, that was very interesting because I've never really written anything ever and had never wanted to or had really the inclination to. But I came across um, during my lifetime of of having uh, kind of inkling that something wasn't right. <laughs> Something's off. There's something more than what appears mm. before my eyes. Um, I came across the principles and um, that pretty much put all the pieces together throughout all of my um, seeking in different modalities and different spiritual traditions and psychological um, traditions. Um, and so um, it just came to me one day, I'm going to write a book. And um, I had really nothing to do with it. It really came through as a download. I love there, was, there was nothing Amanda had to do with it. I love that. It was, so much. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, yeah. I remember you saying that, and that was so powerful for me. It was, it was yeah. another affirmation in a way that, you know, we're, we're hearing all these beautiful things about this understanding and something within me will keep questioning that. And then all of a sudden I'll hear someone like yourself when you said the book wrote itself and it's like, yeah. whoa, that is so awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I mean, I did, I did the work of writing it and publishing it, but really came through from somewhere else <laughs> which is which is interesting because that really illustrated how it's always been like that 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 Amanda had taken claim or blame for everything else that has ever happened <laughs> which is insane and not yeah. true so this was a very hands-on visceral illustration of that phenomenon that life does itself there's nobody doing it separate from life. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It's a great feeling. It really is amazing. We've already just begun this podcast and my mind is already shooting off in like 5 million different directions. So just want to let you Good. know, my mind will explode on a regular basis. It does. It just happens, especially in these conversations. So I love it. Yeah, if you see anything like particles or debris, don't worry about that. Brilliant. <laughs> we'll get back to the book. And so there was something that in your life that you decided uh, you saw and that something showed up for you. And the book is my point of view. It's absolutely stunning and amazing. Thank you. Um, I have lots of friends that have read it also, and they think it's incredible. In fact, they know that I'm here today with you. And they've mm -hmm. kindly sent me a a lot of questions. Wow, great. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to explain some more about the book? Um, well, it, it's a snapshot of what was um, understood at, at the time that really opened up the floodgates for going deeper and deeper and deeper into what the hell this is if I, what what the hell's going on right um, and it's it's the subject matter is is pertaining to the story of Amanda and and that character and how she struggled and suffered in a particular way with food and body weight and that whole subject but it's really that's just a red herring it's not about that at all <laughs> it's about really seeing what what's really going on what if as much as i can and 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 that whole exploration and so the three years since that book um it's really gone so much deeper and, and even the principles have now lost their um, conceptual shell and really broken out into 
a more smooth, like uh, understanding, but without a benchmark of the principles and this is this and that is this and that. So it's really gone beyond those concepts, but it's a good way to kind of package that for somebody to start to explore it. I love that. I love the fact that things have smoothed out and same with me. It yeah. seems so much easier now, even though, yeah. even though it may be a challenge for me at times to explain that this is a personal feeling, which I know that, that you're, that you have also, it's a personal feeling that, that it has smoothed out where, yeah. oh my gosh, it's, it is breathtaking to see how deep this thing goes and it mm-hmm. goes inward and it, and then it, it goes in into that space and then it just expands out to every direction possible within infinity and beyond yes within infinity and beyond that's a great little i should remember that that's cool that might have been trademarked it really i (laughs) I thought that just came through me right now it did but okay (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really that what happens is it seems that um, the labels and the names and the concepts kind of slide off of their, whatever they're trying to point to. And so whatever they're pointing to now becomes uh, the sense. It becomes that feeling that kind of, knowing beyond what the words were saying, what the labels were saying. So it's really, it does, it it goes out. Um, Even though there is no out, there is no in, there's just a seamless, edgeless experience, apparently. You know, and I love recently, not, I don't know, recently, maybe forever, I don't know, but, um, Mm -hmm that yin yang symbol that Mm -hmm. it's it has such incredible meaning to it now i of course am putting that meaning on that symbol Mm -hmm. but then to go back to its history and read more and more about that and to see in even when that symbol first arose the the amazing part of how there was so much war so much destruction and war going on that out of that process, not even that process, these words don't work well, but out of all of that came wise people, not many, you know, yeah. on the ratio between the, the ratio of the people fighting and, and trying to conquer each other came very few, but wise, very wise people showed up. And that, and it shows that balance, that balance between mm-hmm. our concepts of what is so important, and then that beautiful understanding of who we are innately. Mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful to see the symbolism to me of the yin yang symbol, whether yeah. I don't have to grow up in that culture, I don't have to believe in everything that they believe in or you know it's just like there's something so simple and so beautiful about this circle yes and then there's images within that circle that aren't just circles they're a flow they're a flow Mm -hmm. that they flow Mm -hmm. into each other and they have bits and pieces of each other and they're a circle they're the whole and it's just right right you need, yeah, up needs down, right needs left, black needs white. There, there, that's the duality of life, which is, which is one thing. It's not even a thing, but you know what I mean. Right. It's, it's just an, that yin yang symbol is a very beautiful illustration of that. Um, you, you can't have, there is there is no way to have one experience without having its opposite show up 
or be sensed in some way. It's like it's like hope and fear are one thing. I hope something's going to happen and I fear it won't. <laughs> right? They're going to come together and knowing that they're going to come together there's no more there's no more seeking and, and grasping onto hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. It's just right. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you didn't say anything. You go it's just no, I'm it's like so hard to talk about. Well, what no, but that was perfect. <laughs> words. Was perfect. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the belief in 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 hope and and something better, something next, something other, is really um, the basis of suffering because it's it's really denying that this is all there is. This right now. This this. There is no next. There's no other. There's no. It cannot right now cannot be any other way. There's no parallel universe where you and I aren't feeling, sensing, or thinking something different. It doesn't exist. Where, where is it? <laughs> and that also includes, you know, if the thought of I hope this feeling moves and changes, then I'll then I'll be okay. That thought will come in because that's part of our programming to believe in the next moment. But it doesn't, it, it's, sim, it's completely a mental fabrication. There's no edges between moments. There's no, there's no now. There's no then. Those are all mental fabrications for the, for the mind to try to orient itself in time and space, which is useful, but it's not reality. It's not true. Did, did that make sense? Did, did my brain explode yet? Because I feel like it's on the back of that, that veil of my consciousness <laughs> back there. So good. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, Amanda and I have kind of an inside joke. Can I tell them the inside joke? Yeah. Well, the inside joke is that Amanda and I are, are on uh, community calls through the little school of Big Change. Oh, and yeah. there will be people that bring, of course, they bring their current problems. And mm -hmm. they're, they're very real. And we can talk about how real those are those problems are and it makes sense it makes sense that they're so real but yes. then amanda will get in there i'm just saying she'll share some of her wisdom and you can actually see people's heads kind of like scramble like their minds are scrambling it's almost like a a challenge for this thing to now be to be challenged for this thing to be challenged by wisdom and clarity, where this thing does not understand wisdom and clarity at all, it doesn't seem like. I don't know. I'm, I'm I make up a lot of stuff, of course, but it seems like that you can actually physically see the person, like. <laughs> and we talk about it scrambling someone's eggs. Yes. Yeah. Scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. Whether or not this is not about. Veganism. This is a, just a a, a, a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, a metaphor for how you can actually see someone's someone's not conflict, but the maybe it is a conflict. It, maybe it's a conflict and resolve where this thing is now trying to figure out the, the how to fix that problem, but the the heart and the wisdom say say this. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But this thing up there is just like, oh. What? Yeah. Yeah. What anything, anything, about? anything that can be, that can throw a wrench in the cogs of the mental chatter is good because it really, it really halts that, that 
um, habitual figuring out of words. I mean, then we have to use words, but if there's certain, it seems to be that there's certain phrases and words that come through that really scramble that phenomenon of, of the mind's logical bucket bucketing of ideas and concepts and then trying to put them together. It's like the mind is, is trying to staple waves together to make the ocean. And every time it tries to do that, it's, it, there's no, there's no end to that because it's already ocean. And so we're trying, we're, we're, we're continuously pointing towards what's already the case. <laughs> I had an interesting thought show up for me this morning and it was how I was going to do this podcast. And the, you know, the mind came in and started to say, all oh, this is, you're not going to be able to handle this. This is going to be too much for you. And I'm like, please. Brain, please. Yeah. One thing I find myself doing occasionally is beating around the bush. But that metaphor for me is simply I'm beating around the bush in order to catch the snake. But then I see the snake and I start having a conversation with the snake and realize that she and I are pretty much the same. We talk philosophy. And then that separates the, 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 what separates is that illusion that we're separate. And then I realized that we are both one together. So. Yeah. And it, yeah. And uh, all around that bush, you've come back to what's always the case. Always has been. I'm going to go to the book. Okay. Uncovery. And I'm going to go to chapter nine. Oh boy. That's right. A deeper exploration. At first glance, it appears that things, people, and circumstances have the ability to cause feelings in us. This is basic outside in misunderstanding that we have been conditioned in and have accepted without question. And accepted easily because it is seductive and convincing. And it really looks like that's the way it is. This old paradigm of how we think the mind works is steadily losing ground and being replaced with the new paradigm of the three principles understanding of innate health. Yes. It's losing ground. And, and the new ground is what, Amanda? Um... The new ground is that there is no ground. Now, in the context of that book and what you just read is a way to illustrate something other than what we have always thought to be true. The concept of the principles is a way to do that, but we cannot stop there. You cannot land on something called the principles and be, oh, okay, this is the ground. Because it's all an illusion that there is a ground. You're fall, we are falling through an edgeless nothing, nothingness, and we don't need handholds. But at the beginning, it is very helpful to have handholds and to have a, a, an apparent understanding of a paradigm that blows out, blows the old paradigm out of the water, which could, with the old paradigm would be what I think and feel and sensate and feel what I think and feel and have sensations about is real and true. This is how I am. And this is how they are. This is what the world is. And that's it. And, and when something come, a new concept comes in to blow that out of the water, it opens the gates for something new to come in, for something, we don't know what that is, but it will lead to less and less handholds and grasping onto understanding and knowledge and I got it and I'm okay now because I understand. No, there's no... 
there's there, there's nobody that needs to be secure because like we we talked about the yin yang if you're looking for security boom insecurity they have to come together so it's 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 all kind of shedding away of of the search for security because that will imply that there is such a thing as insecurity and that that is to be avoided at all costs. And this again is where my mind explodes. No, I I do. I love it. I love it. And the beautiful thing about being a part of this understanding is that it does deepen on its own. Yes. It's, it almost feels like it's waiting for me to open up because for me, it didn't, I didn't have a conversation with Amy Johnson. And then the next day I was completely (laughs) right. Right. Yeah. I find myself learning just learning and learning and learning and and knowing that there's so much more out there, not ever, you know, doing whatever I can to not let myself get stuck in believing in one particular thing. I mean, that's, right. that's so yeah. far from yeah. that, this expansion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it, it's really about believing in things. There are no sayings. If sayings are a mental fabrication in a way that the mind can label the world in order to know know it, that's not really a, a, a place to stand again. So yeah, believing in things as the as as if they were real and true is a limitation. It's not wrong. No. It's not right. It's just a limitation that, that seems to be happening in the streaming. We were we were talking about beliefs, and I, I find it fascinating where when I look back in my past of all the things that I believed in, and again, like you said, there's nothing wrong with believing in something, but there's a, a difference, and it's strange, and it's hard to explain the difference between believing something because because – in my diagnosis of depression, I started to believe. And in that belief process, there was a whole world that I created with my belief. Innocently, innocently, I created this entire world around a belief. And now it's like, I don't want any beliefs. And I, I know that may sound strange to people, but but I don't want beliefs. I want to keep seeking. I want to always. I will always seek for as long as I live, and I will always learn. And I'll I'll take tidbits of information and and wisdom and clarity from every single person I come in contact with, from nature to people to animals to whatever, the weather, the earth, the sky, the universe. I'll I'll take whatever I can get. But that belief in this is the way things are is to me at this point. It doesn't. Yeah, it's yeah. It's it's limited to this one tiny little spot when. Yeah. Yeah. When the universe and everything around it in our it is so massive, it's beyond comprehension. How beautiful, incredible that yeah. space is. Yes. So we. The mother of all beliefs, though, is is the I. So you didn't create a world within those beliefs. You are the belief. You, Dave, single, separate person, long-lasting, independent, has thoughts, has feelings, has a diagnosis. That was the mother of the belief. That is the belief. And in within that belief, the story unfolds of a world created that you just that you just talked about. 
So it's really, I know it's, it's the wording, but it's really key to see that you never created anything. You never created, you never believed in anything. You were the belief. That makes sense. But that's hidden. That's hidden. And we don't see that because we are the belief. The belief in, in me as a, as a isolated person self that is real and has has choices and free will and and can do it right or do it wrong and has to do life in a certain way and behave a certain way and that is where we get all tangled up in that belief so it's 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 if you want to, if you, if you're on the road to not believe anything, you have to start with the belief in belief. And that is, <laughs> that is the weird thing is that if you just simply go back to the mother of all beliefs, and that is, I am who I think I am and, and look at that and say, Hmm, what is that? What can I, you know, just be curious about that. And then everything out, off of that, all, all those, all, that mother's children start to unravel themselves. Because it's all a scaffolding from that one belief. And the house of cards will fall away. But we have to take out the bottom card, not the top card, and then the next card, and then the next card. You know, you take out the, the rug from beneath. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. You don't take the top card off. No. You no. pull that rug and you pull it hard. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't even have to be that hard. It's a deck of cards. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're falling, but there's no ground. There's, it's, it's just a, a seamless, edgeless, disappearing, appearing dream that is ineffable. I can't even <laughs> talk about it correctly i hope i hope people haven't tuned out by now and pressed stop but they've moved on to tiktok and yeah <laughs> squirrel has bitten a cat's tail so um <laughs> uh, you know i want a couple things i want to throw in here because i'm so excited that you're here and one is, and I'm, we're going to, I'm jumping subjects right now. Here we go. In my seeking, I came across a, a documentary. It's called Inner Worlds, Outer Worlds. It's on YouTube. It's two hours long. And YouTube broke it down into four parts. But when I originally saw it, I saw it two hours straight. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love how they made that thing. It's just stunning. And so I must have watched that thing so many times. It was like watching The Breakfast Club back in the day because I, I memorized the parts. I, I knew certain parts. And I decided at one point, I've got to share this with people who are really going to appreciate this. So I sh shared it with Amy and Amanda. And uh, Amanda came back later after watching it. and we found out an interesting fact. The most incredible documentary to me recently on the face of this planet just so happens to have a certain person within that documentary. And that is Amanda Jones. Yeah. Was that, that was, what was that like for you to see yourself? We'll talk about the, the rug being pulled out and all of a sudden the ground going and, and, just so the story is that I was a professional dancer for many, many years. And you mentioned the documentary on that weekend retreat we were at. And I had watched the first hour. And then when I got home a few days later, maybe, maybe a week later, I put it back on to watch the rest of it. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. And they're talking about the large Haldron Collider and, and dark space and dark matter. And they have an interlude of some dancers um, to illustrate this, the seamlessness of, of this invisible 
something that is the fabric. It appears to be in, phys- in quantum physics, the fabric of whatever this is. And so this, these dancers were, were doing a phrase and I, I looked and immediately I knew the choreography. I knew which, which dancer I was. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it again. <laughs> and I shot up. And I screamed and I just stood there, just transfixed. It, like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I yelled to my husband. I was like, come, 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 come. I'm in. I, it was incredible. So yeah, that was a trip. That was a trip. So yeah. apparently they, they found some old footage somewhere and spliced it into the documentary and <laughs> what are the odds oh, no. i mean of all the things that had to occur from the apparently apparent big bang all the way up to me in my living room watching this documentary oh my gosh it's it's unfathomable it's it's, it's, unfathomable. it's a from the in, from the universe saying you, this is all a dream. This is all an incredible, unknowable, ungraspable something. And just when, when the mind thinks it's got it down, something like this happens to, to, to clear the decks and say, you know, <laughs> there's more going on here than our senses and our mind and our intellect are projecting. Yeah, it's oh my gosh! It was it, you know, and I saw the dancer over and over again. And <laughs> I love how they put the put it all together, and they're talking about, and we even say that in our language, we say that life is a dance, and and yeah. it really is. It's a beautiful dance. Yeah. It's incredible yeah. dance, even through yeah. the suffering. It's amazing yeah. dance. Yes. And yes. and then to find out that that was you, <laughs> and it was just like, ah, oh, of <laughs> course it was. It was like. <laughs> 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 well, of course it was. Wasn't me out there dancing. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was uh incredible. In- yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Are you also a Matrix fan? Yes. Yes, I am. And I went to see the Matrix with some buddies of mine and I remember watching it 1999, I think. Yeah. And I didn't get any of it. I didn't get any of it. And I I left that movie and I was like, I wasn't sure. I I left the movie not knowing what happened, but there was something that within me that said, Dave, you have got to go back tomorrow and watch that thing over again. And Mm -hmm. so I went back the next day by myself and I watched that movie and, and that was it. That was it. Once I, w- I watched it the second time and I saw that I realized the story of he was born, uh, he was born into slavery, mental slavery. He was born into mental slavery and the computer program that's running the, the, that's running the program is what he's living. And when, yeah. when he finally, when Morpheus pulls him out of there and he asks, you know, why is it so bright? Why can't I see? And, he, and, they, and they say, you've never used your eyes before. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my gosh. I mean, what an what a incredible, incredible point of view or philosophy. And, and when, you, when, that, when after that movie came out, there was a uh, website that you could go to and it just, it was massive. It would t- talked about all the philosophy fees they used in order to uh, put that film together. And, and yet they never really told you exactly, you know, exactly what their intentions were, but they sure talked about a lot. I've never heard of Jainism before, but thanks to the website following that movie, there was all these philosophies that were a part of it and oh my gosh that's such an incredible movie yeah i agree 
it, I see it as a documentary. <laughs> it's, a, it's really a metaphorical documentary uh, about, you know, this simulation that we emerge within, AKA thought, and that, and how it's, it, every once in a while there'll be a glitch, like, the inner world's outer world's thing there'll be a glitch and there'll be a recognition of oh it's a dream this is dreaming this is a simulation and and that those little glimpses are so brilliant and and wonderful and 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 then we go back into the dreaming and, and into the the simulation and but, but Eventually you have one foot in nothingness and one foot in the dream. And there's a, there's a, there's a beautiful balance of without edges. It's just a recognition of, of the seamlessness of life doing itself without anybody with volition having to steer the boat. And from this, this knowing that you have, do you experience amazing freedoms from that it's not really an experience it's just kind of on because an experience kind of implies it starts and it ends so i feel all the spectrum of human feelings oh i love incredibly that. incredibly I love full i mean there's no guardrails anymore um to stop some feeling from coming in or blah blah it's just um it's just kind of on and less of a uh, an experience i love that. that starts and then it and stops and then starts and then stops and then you know going back to the matrix it's strange though because i am the same way i want i it's not that i want i am Going, to, I am the spectrum of experiences. I am everything that's yeah. going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And yet, the Matrix talks about, you know, there's guards to that. There's guards to that freedom. They don't, you know, the agents, the machines don't want you to be that free. They don't want you to be yeah. that free. So yeah. they'll do whatever it takes to keep you down. You know, they'll, they'll keep you following something right. that, that yes and that's the that's a metaphor for the the mental activity that that has to continually create a you within certain parameters that are acceptable that fit within the programming that's its job it's not personal it's it's a phenomenon of keeping this idea of of Dave or Amanda relevant. It has no inherent relevance at all. So it has to keep creating it and maintaining it in thought, by thought, as thought. And the irony is if it wouldn't, if it doesn't, it will always still do that, create, st continue to create and maintain that idea. But the fear that it is, is implied in if, if it isn't maintained is an illusion because nothing will happen because it's not real. <laughs> like, the, 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 the agents within the matrix are in the matrix. They're not outside. They're not, there's nothing outside. It's all a continuous weaving of the same story. We only have an hour. <laughs> Can we have 12 hours instead? Can I sign up for sure. the 12 hour podcast? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I knew this was going to be incredible, but. Oh. All right. All right. I'm going to pull out the book. Just one more thing from the, the good book. Hold on a second. <laughs> you can't force an insight, you can't control what insights arise. But you can start to look in the direction of where insights come from, out of the blue. Yes, there's, we are the blue, so to speak. 
And the, the word insight is really slippery for a lot of people because they hear the message that insight is the key to freedom, which, okay, yes, but there's nobody that is conjuring up insight. There's no person that is realizing insight. There's just insight coming from, an, as an expression of the blue, coming out of the blue as an expression of itself. So that's a, that's, that's a, that's a key thing, I think, for people to start, it, when they start exploring this, to keep in mind that the mind will start to grasp onto insight and look for insight. And it, that's just a self-serving phenomenon that follows the storyline of, if I have an insight, then I'll be okay. And that's suffering. If I blah, 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 then I'll be okay. That's, that's suffering. There is no I that has to be okay or not okay. It doesn't exist. It's a thought. It's, it's hard to climb out of thought when you are one. <laughs> so, yes, look to the blue, which, which means look to what is unknown, unknowable, ungraspable. And just notice that that's where every thing, idea, thought, feeling, sensation, apparently arises from and goes back into. Wow, I love that. I love that I understand what you're saying perfectly. <laughs> I love that. I don't too. know if anyone else is paying attention. I don't know. But wow, that was that was good for me. I need a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke. Damn it. Amanda Jones, my friend Elise Daly would like to say hello to you. Oh, dear, sweet Elise. Oh. I have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. And this is from some people that know I'm talking to you. Do you believe that we have a choice as to what we think or no choice at all? Do we have a choice over? where we place our attention and what we give importance to? No, absolutely not. If you look a little closer, thought just appears. And then the sense of the chooser comes a little bit after. I chose that thought. And now I can choose the next thought. Well, who chose that thought? The idea of the me is the belief in choice. So it will feel like I have chosen to place my attention somewhere. But how did that happen? What mechanism did I do that? Which neuron did I direct to spark that experience into, into being? It feels like there's choice. It's not true. And all it takes is a little bit of a closer look that uh, it's just appearing. Thought is appearing. And within that thought, there's a self that appears with it. They come together. And then they go. And so, no. It, the thing is that it's not that we, are, we don't have choice. It's that there's no choice or non-choice. Choice is, choice is a, a, a mental fabrication of self that believes it is separate from life and has to do it right and might do it wrong. So it better make the right choice. Does that answer the question? It answers it perfectly well with me. How is life experience for you now? Do you still get caught up? Do you come out of it sooner? What is the most dominant feeling you tend to live in most days? Um, wow. So what it looks like apparently is um, 
less of a chopped up experience of caught up, not caught up, caught up, not caught up. It's a seamless, this is arising and that's what is. This is arising and that's what is. This is arising and that's what is. Now, I, there's, there's feelings, there's mental activity, there's, there's worry, there's, there's all of it, but it's not, it doesn't have an owner. It does, it's not mine. If there's fear, there's fear. It's not my fear. If there's caught upness, there's caught upness. It's not mine. The subject has been taken out of the equation. The, 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 the owner has been taken out of the equation because it's been seen somehow by nobody <laughs> that, that that was a, a sort of a hitchhiker, an idea glommed on to what was apparent what is apparently happening that it's mine so a dominant feeling there is none it's it's too seamless it's too transient it's too ungraspable to pin down um any sort of dominance and 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 this is all a story anyway so <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing this is all a story anyway yeah yeah out of the blue this is all a story anyway yeah. amanda jones thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me and the people who are watching the space between i can't thank you enough i really hope that we get to do this again uh, i would love to a thousand or two more times. I think that would probably sum it up <laughs> pretty close anyway. I'm in. Good, good. Thank you so much. You're, you're an amazing human being. Uh, I appreciate your service to others. That's so important. And, and just thank you. Thank you, Dave. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor and I love you. And this is, um, the most exciting exploration ever. And there's, there's just nothing like it. So I appreciate the time. And I love you too. My love that is me loves the love that is you. That's right. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're Thank you, Dave. I, I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we'll do it again. Yeah, look, we have Let's to. More questions in if there's more questions. Yeah, in. yeah. And we didn't get to anything, you know, we just. Yeah, I know. In the surface. Yeah, we'll do it again. Okay. All right. Thank we'll you do so part much. Two. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. See you later. Okay, so that's a wrap. That worked out fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. It's very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come up with it. You know, the, the thingy, the whole. Of course. I'm serious. I've been, thinking, <laughs> I've been thinking about this for such a long time. And now it's like, it's here, it's happening. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. We can move into the podcast. <laughs> okay. That part is taken away and then we'll splice okay. and cut and move that one over. I have to sure. add it. Yeah. This thing that <laughs> I'm too excited right now. Oh, I'm too excited. Oh, I love it. Thank you for asking me. You kidding me? Oh, this is incredible. It's we could talk forever because yeah. I hope I hope Don't 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 well, go I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's all it's a story, it's amazing, it's seamless. I love how there's no edges. I love your metaphors, you know, it's it makes perfect sense. The understanding that we are living in this moment and then boom, there's another one. And it's just one right after the other after the other. And that's all we get. We only get that one moment. But it's nothing but moments and it's a trillion. You know, it's just it's just massive amounts of mo moments. There's no need to go back. There's nothing back there. This moment right here is absolutely beautiful, incredible. 
It absolutely is. Everything about this moment is amazing. It was incredible. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. It was just so strange. It was so different. I just, I was totally in love. And, and the recordings were just like, that I was <laughs> in love with the love that I am, even though I am the love. It's not like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like realizing that you're the love. And then saying to yourself, like Ram Dass would do, you know, his mantra was that I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. It w it felt like that. It felt like yeah. I was love, but I was loving the love that I am. What was so amazing to me was the imagination that was going on up there. I was in a space of love that I've never experienced before. Just like anything else, it's a personal experience. Just like this moment, yeah. personal for yeah. me. But I, I wanted to share it with someone. I haven't been able to share it with yeah. anyone. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was really cool. It's like the illustration of my football <laughs> I like the eyelashes. <laughs> oh my god! I have to go <laughs> watch my head explode. Just as a as a fun thing to do.